Welcome to a special weekend edition of The Big Story. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dylan Ung. And I'm Olivia Quay. Subscribe to The Straits Times channel so you never miss a single episode. With six days to go to polling day and only one weekend in the nine-day campaign period, it's full steam ahead for all parties contesting GE 2020. Multimedia journalist Kimberly Zhao tells us more. This morning saw candidates out in full force as campaigning hit the weekend. Political big guns were seen in areas where they are not contesting to lend their support to their fellow party members. Foreign Minister Vivian Balakrishnan joined candidate Mr Liang Eng Hua over at Bukit Panjang SMC, while Dr Chi Soon Juan of the Singapore Democratic Party was seen introducing Mr Robin Lowe in Yuhua SMC. Emeritus Senior Minister Go Chok Dong had breakfast with People's Action Party's candidate for Marine Parade GRC, Dr Tan Si Leng, at Marine Terrace Market, where they ran into Mr Pritam Singh and Ms Sylvia Lim of the Workers' Party. For this election, uh Oh. Reminds me of the uh, 2001 general election. I also call for an early election because we then had SARS, 2001, which uh, is the equivalent of today's COVID-19, <laughs> and the economic impact of SARS as well, and also uh, at that time terrorism. So I thought over this. I said the issues today are the same: lives, get health, livelihood. Best jobs and our future. WP Party Chief Pritam Singh and Chairman Sylvia Lim were at the market with the party's Marine Parade GRC team. Our role as an opposition is to make sure that when we represent the people in Parliament, we are bringing their voices into Parliament on that front. So I think that's something we'll have to work very hard at. And I mean, what's the point of being in Parliament? Our goal is not to go there and just uh, needle the PAP. We want good outcomes for Singapore. And for that, we have to play our part. Candidates also made the rounds at their respective constituencies, including Dr. Chi Soon Juan over at Bukit Pato SMC. For me, it's more than running a constituency. It's building up a community and how we can all feel proud when we say we are Batokians and yet to make this community really work. In Bukit Panjang, Mr. Liang Eng Hua and New Face Edward Chia spoke on jobs and training. So I want to announce today that uh, in Bukit Panjang, I'm going to uh, introduce a scheme called the Jobs and Skill. Uh, being an SME business owner, uh, I, I intend to help uh, redouble efforts to help SMEs innovate because SMEs provide 70% of the jobs in Singapore. Dr Tan Cheng Bok of the Progress Singapore Party was busy visiting various locations within the West Coast GRC where he is contesting. Over in McPherson, a resident started a Facebook Live session as he chatted with People's Power Party chief Go Ming Singh, while his opponent, incumbent PAP MP Tin Pei Ling, took pictures and chatted with residents. WP's Nicole Xia and Deputy Prime Minister Hing Sui Kiet, candidates for East Coast GRC, were both at a walkabout with their respective teams at New Upper Changi Road. Even non-politicians joined in on the action as Singapore veteran actor Lim K. Su was spotted lending his support to the SDP in Bukit Batu. The candidates' packed schedule in the morning is expected to continue as they make use of the weekend to reach out to residents. Prime Minister Lee Sen Lung also made a special appearance today in an online rally by the PAP team in the new Singkang GRC. Mr. Lee said the PAP team, led by Labour Chief Ng Chi Ming, has the experience and the skills to represent the people. If you look at the other opposition parties, they all say they want to help workers. I mean, they have to say that. But they have no plan to deal with a crisis. And if you look at what is in their manifesto, like the Workers' Party manifesto, Workers' Party is standing in Singka. What they do, they take the PAP's plan, they say, very good. And here are a few holes, please patch the holes. Here are a few places where you can add more money, make it cheaper, do more, work harder. I also can. <laughs> so, uh, as Vivian said on the TV debate a few days ago, uh, this is PAP light. But I tell you, why do you want to settle for PAP light? The real thing is much better. The PAP is up against a Workers' Party team led by economics professor Jameis Lim in Sengkang. 
Meanwhile, other ministers have also criticized the opposition for not having concrete plans to deal with the COVID-19 crisis. Trinan Industry Minister Chan Chun Singh said getting through this difficult period should be the focus of the opposition instead of them just providing a check and balance to PAP. Mr Chan, who was out at the ABC Brickworks Market in Tanjong Park GRC, pointed out that a COVID-19 plan was glaringly missing from the opposition party's manifestos, as well as in discussions over the past few weeks. Over an issue, Law and Home Affairs Minister K. Shanmugam said that every party needs to have a plan and policy for the people. It's important that every party sets out not just you know some broad statements, but how what are your plans to deal with that? And what are your what are you putting forward? It's not just a question of some sound bites, concrete plans, jobs, economy, the recession that is coming, people's lives, COVID crisis, how are you gonna get out of it? Even if you're there to check, what are your alternative plans? policies. And during a walkabout in West Coast, Social and Family Development Minister Desmond Lee said that the most immediate mission, if his team is elected, is to ensure the government's COVID-19 support schemes reach families in need. We were distributing flyers with information on the schemes, we were going door to door, uh, not just to campaign, but more importantly to share with them what assistance is available. We've collected a lot of feedback, we've uh, got a lot of residents who shared with us their concerns. Some of them are asking for help to apply for schemes. Some of them are concerned about family who might be trapped overseas. Uh, some of them have uh, not been able to get their uh, rental rebates from landlords and have asked us for help. And so uh, we campaign by helping people. In the meantime, Workers' Party Chief Pritam Singh said today that it's not possible for the opposition to replace the PAP government. In his response to Trade and Industry Minister Chan Chun Singh's comments about this very possibility, Mr Singh cited the 2015 election, when Mr Ko Bun Wan similarly said that Singaporeans could wake up to a country where PAP wasn't in power. It took, what, 16 years? since our after our independence for us for the opposition to win even one elected seat and 23 years after 1988 when the GRC system was introduced for the opposition to win one GRC so let's put this fear mongering in perspective and I hope those uh, that information that historical uh, look back uh, is helpful in terms of how realistic this prospect uh, I mean Minister Chan paints uh, is possible I don't think it's possible at all Let's get Deputy Political Editor Royston Sim in uh, to weigh in on today's uh, campaigning. Welcome, Royston. So, PAP's East Coast GRC team held an e-rally earlier today. DPM Hing, of course, a last-minute addition to the team, having moved from Tampanese GRC. How hard is it for him to play uh, catch-up compared to the other candidates in the team, like Maliki Osman, Jessica Tan, and Cheryl, Ta uh, Cheryl Chan, who are more familiar with the residents and issues of East Coast? Olivia, so definitely as a, a, a new candidate moving over from the neighbouring Tampanese GRC, you know, DPM Heng will uh, need to play catch up. He will have to, you know, uh, he will need some time to get used to con constituency. So that's why, you know, pretty much since nomination day when we found out he was going to run as a candidate in East Coast, you know, since then he's hit the ground running every day. You know, he's been visiting. Um, different parts of the ward. He's been crisscrossing, you know, the constituency. So one day he's in Bedok North, the next day he's in Bedok South, you know, he's in Kampong Chai Chi, um, in Fengshan, basically going round the different parts of the GRC. Um, he's gone, you know, to visit uh, markets, uh, hawker centres, you know, he's gone on house visits. And, you know, he, he says that it's, it's pretty much to get views from residents, to get feedback, and, you know, this will help to bring him up to speed in terms of uh, what are the issues that the residents in the ward are concerned about, you know, what are their concerns, you know, what do they want addressed. And uh, I think the, the best way for him to do that, you know, in this condensed period of time is, is really just to uh, go out on the ground as much as possible. But that said, uh, you know, I, I, I think he, um, he has the advantage of having three incumbents uh, on his team. As you mentioned, you know, uh, Ms. Cheryl Chan, um, Ms. Jessica Tan, and also, you know, Dr. Maliki, are all um, incumbent MPs. 
and so you know he can tap on their experience and and he would have uh, they would have some familiarity with the war you know what are the issues that matter and you know so so he has their experience to tap on and and they can help to bring him up to speed and likewise for the fifth candidate on the team uh, Mr Tan Kien Hao is also another new face for the PAP uh, Royston, now still staying on East Coast, how is the battle for East Coast shaping up? You know, we saw the candidates from PAP and Workers' Party at the same Badok Hawker Centre uh, this morning. Well, Dylan, we are at about the halfway mark of the uh, hustings right now, you know, and, and I think uh, campaigning-wise, you know, both parties are ramping up the intensity. You know, we're getting closer and closer to polling day. And, uh, you know, for East Coast has been uh, a hot war uh, in, in 2011. Uh, the PAP got about 44, 54, sorry, 54.8 percent of mm. the vote, and this, in, and in 2015, you know, they managed to increase their vote share to uh, about 60, uh, 60.7 or so, and so uh, they they improved on that result in 2015, and and so, but it was still, I think, among all the GRCs, that was still the smallest winning margin because uh, that in 2015, you know, we, we saw an island-wide swing towards the PAP. So, so it, we, we still expect the ward to be, you know, uh, it's, it will still be a, a tough battle. But, but certainly one thing that sort of swings things in the PAP's favour is the inclusion of DPM Heng on the slate. Um, you know, it was, uh, it was a move that uh, people had speculated about, but um, it still came as a surprise to political watchers, you know, the fact that the PAP would move one of its biggest guns over to East Coast to defend the constituency, constituency against the Workers' Party, I think it sends a signal. Um, and, you know, I think it will present uh, voters with uh, a tough choice, you know, because you have, uh, say you're a swing voter, you know, on, on one hand, you, you may be thinking about, you know, having an opposition presence in Parliament. On the other, you know, you have um, the future Prime Minister. And, and so you really need to think hard about your vote and, and I think, uh, you know, having DPM Heng move in, you know, will give uh, voters a lot to think about and it sort of tilts uh, the balance towards the PAP. I mean, political watchers that we have spoken to uh, think that the PAP has an edge, I think partly because of DPM Heng and partly because uh, based on 2015 results, you know, the Workers' Party, I think, would need a 10.8% swing in votes to win the GRC and that's a lot of ground to make up. Uh, granted, you know, their slate has, um, they have their own star power, uh, mainly in the form of uh, former uh, NSP candidate uh, Nicole Sia. She ran with the NSP in 2011 and she's now back in uh, Workers' Party Blue. So, you know, and she's still, she's still popular on the ground. You know, people go up to her and talk to her, interact with her. So she has some star power there. Um, but, you know, uh, Based on what we are hearing and based on what political analysts think, uh, it, it, it seems that the PAP has, has an edge. And for the WP, they've been working very hard on the ground. Uh, their party chief, Pritam Singh, has said that you know, the, the fact that the PAP has moved um, DPM hangover, you know, it's, it's a recognition that of, of the strength of the WP slate. But I mean, I think the fact that you know, they have DPM hang to contend with now means they're going to face an uphill battle um, as we get towards polling day. Right, for sure. Well, it's a very busy uh, Saturday, Royston. There's only one weekend in the nine-day campaign period today and tomorrow. So today we've seen uh, several big guns walking the ground outside their own constituencies, lend lending their support. What does it say about where these uh, big guns chose to show up and how big of an impact uh, does their presence have, you think? So, I mean, we saw um, Workers' Party Chief uh, Pritam Singh, you know, go to Marine Parade, you know, uh, and uh, you, you know, we mentioned earlier in the program that uh, PM Lee um, went uh, to join the Sengkang um, PAP team on their e-rally. Mm -hmm. So, you know, party leaders, um, especially you know, for say PM Lee, they have star power, uh, and you know, they they are vote pullers. So, where the party deploys them is a signal of you know where. Uh, they expect the hot contest to be. You know, they, they bring in their heavyweights um, to walk the ground, or in this case, um, for, for the Sengkang PAP team, you know, to, uh, to lend an online presence to try and, you know, bring in more support for the team. So I think what this tells us, you know, especially in the case of a PM appearing in Sengkang, is that the PAP expects Sengkang to, uh, you know, they're, ex they're expecting a tough fight in Sengkang. Reason being, 
uh, the the new this is a new GR, a new four man GRC. You know, it, it comprises uh, parts of Sengkang West, which the WP had contested in. Uh, 2011, 2015, and they didn't do too badly. In, in um, 2011, the WP got 41.9% uh, in the single seat, and you know, in um, 2015, this dipped to about 39.7. But it was still about, you know, it's still a pretty credible showing. And um, the, the the rest of the ward comprises part of, um, you know, the Sengkang area that was hived off from Pasir Ris Pongo GRC. But then there's also Pongo East which uh, the WP had won in um, the 2013 by-election with about 54.5% of the vote. And they only very narrowly lost it to uh, Mr. Charles Chong in the 2015 uh, general election. So what this says is that you know, the, the WP has been walking the ground in, uh, in Sengkang and, and you know, in, in this overall Sengkang GRC. They are not unfamiliar names in the area. And so I think the PAP is expecting a tough contest. Also, the fact that they have, um, you know, on their slate there's a lawyer hurting Ru, uh, who was, you know, one of the uh, WP revelations in 2015. And also, um, I guess the, the new WP sensation in 2020, which is economics professor Jameis Lim. You know, he's made a, quite a bit of a splash since um, he appeared on, on, in the debate uh, on Wednesday last week. Yep. And so, you know, during uh, the rally, PM basically um, gave his endorsement to the PAP candidates. You know, he he vouched for their capability. He vouched for you know the ability to get things done, uh, and you know he basically talked up the candidates. And so, where the party leaders go, I think uh, signals where they are expecting um, strong strong contests, and you know that's where um, you know that's where the action is going to be. Well, thanks very much for your time, Roy. We've been speaking to Deputy Political Editor at The Straits Times, Royston Sin. Now moving on, Environment and Water Resources Minister Masago Zulkifli joked about his slip during last night's online rally when he mistakenly referred to Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong as his brother, Mr Lee Hsien Yang. Taking it in his stride on Facebook, Mr. Masago shared a WhatsApp message that his son had sent him. He went on to say that he was so excited about talking about sustainability that he misspoke. Hua Chong Institution has defended its message to students to refrain from posting about the election on social media. The message was sent on the school's integrated e-message board to junior college students. The school said it did not intend to silence their voices, but wanted to encourage them to engage actively in discussion on national issues in a safe environment. It added that social media is not a suitable platform for such discussions, as posts can be screen captured and shared without context. Here's an update on the COVID-19 situation here. 185 new cases were reported today, taking Singapore's total to over 44,600. Today's count includes nine community cases, comprising four Singaporeans or permanent residents and five work pass holders. There is also one imported case. The patient is a permanent resident who was placed on stay-home notice after arriving in Singapore. Migrant workers living in dormitories continue to make up the majority of the other cases and more details will be announced later tonight. Now before we go, during this election period, The Straits Times will be coming to you live three times a day with the latest GE 2020 developments. At 1pm, we have editors take a special lunchtime show where our editors offer their views on the hustings. Then there's the big story at 5.30pm and at 10pm, our special election show, GE 2020. Today, Harianto Deman and Rachel Kelly will have the highlights from the constituency political broadcast on tonight's episode. The Straits Times GE 2020 microsite will also keep you updated. Go to this link for our GE Live blog as well. I'm Dylan Ang with Olivia Quay. We'll be back tomorrow. See you then.